I was re recently at uh, Cloudfest and talked with uh, some SaaS providers of what could we do better with um, uh, MariaDB. And uh, sooner or later, when you talk about, uh, about having tenants on databases, you had a problem with uh, tenants that are noisy, that causes problems for them. And for, and for to be able to find out who they are, you need better tools you need for monitoring, finding those and being able to move them from one hardware to another one. And um, so that was kind of the start of everything. The other problem is also that hosters has that, how can you put more and more tenants on the same hardware? Especially with the noise enablers that you can monitor, you, what the easiest solution is just to put uh, um, them on different virtual machine, machines, Kubernetes, or whatever. But the problem is that the typical hardware nowadays is about 190 gig, and uh, when you have one gig of memory plus uh, overhead, you usually can only put about 100 users on a specific hardware. And uh, how to avoid that is to uh, have one server and one database per tenant, but uh, then you have a problem is that you can monitor them because MariaDB doesn't allow you monitoring on the database level, and, and you also have lots of other issues to it. So the... Basically, the normal model is uh, one physical machine and uh, one virtual machine by, by a customer or tenant, or you basically have one database. So catalogs will change that base, basically that on top of the uh, database, you will have a catalog as uh, one extra directory on top. So that it's, ba it's basically the, exactly the same disk layout as we had before, except we had one directory on top. And the server will be able to run either in the normal configuration or not. We are automatically notice that you have configured the catalogs, they will run with the underlying schema. So we are trying to provide the best of uh, both worlds uh, to be able to make it easier for users. So when you run with catalogs, the attendant will basically see something that looks exactly like a normal uh, MariaDB server. You have, you have your own users, you have your own databases. You can have, according to what you have paid for to the vendor, you can have any, any number of databases, any numbers of users. You're not constrained by just the one user and the one database name that uh, the SaaS provider has provided with you. And the catalogs, we still had a problem with the nosy neighbors, but uh, because you can uh, see the statistics per catalog and per the server, you can very easily find anybody who uses, does some strange, uses CPU, uses lots of disk uh, or anything. So, and uh, it will be also very easy to move one tenant from one server uh, to, uh, for one catalog to another catalog of one, or for one server to, know, to, to their own server, oh, and vice versa. And we'll be also be able to easier enforce quotas. And that's, that, that will come in version two. And I don't mind if you, you ask me questions at any time, because I'm the last per, person, there's nobody after me, I can talk forever. I no, no, the types of quotas is Specifically, like this quotas, or also? We'll be, uh, so we will start, start adding quotas for temper, temper files and they will be extended. The first version is basically what you have now, but it will match with the statistics. And then we, I, I plan to work with uh, lots of different uh, uh, sets of vendors who are supporting this, this technology and uh, work with those and see what are the pain points and see how we can solve it. But at least we have a mechanism you now because the, basically the catalog is internally almost like a co container. So you can get all the statistics and it, when you have that separately, it's also much easier to limit it. 
much easier than anything we had uh, before. So I believe that in theory, uh, you can host probably 100, 100 times more users on the, on the same machine. Uh, it's still in uh, development, development. And um, we are actually searching for in the MariaDB, through the MariaDB Foundation, to sponsor us for those who want to uh, see this happening. And also those who sponsor us uh, will also get it backported to um, a special version backported and up, kept up to date for 10.11. So the, this is now targeted for 11.4, and uh, which means that in practice it will be uh, out somewhere, Mars, a stable next year. But looking at how Maria de Berises is getting into distributions, it probably will be uh, by the end of next year uh, until other SaaS vendors can actually get it. Those who work with us will get it basically one year, one and a half year, maybe two years earlier to adopt their, their tools and uh, test it out. And everybody who's part of the project will be... Any issues that brought to our attention will be taken care of. So, um, so how to they use catalogs? So uh, we will... We'll add catalog options to all, all clients. And for all clients, you have different ways to, to connect. You can connect that by putting catalog just before the, the database name. That will work for any client, all clients, new ones. Um, this is something that IONUS, is also supported project, um, uh, wanted is that we, you can just specify a unique IP and that will directly go to the server and directly log into a specific catalog. You can also do the same thing with port. And you'll be able to do nice things uh, because uh, the catalog structures is identical as you have on-premise. So you can just take a MariaDB dump from your on-premise database, put it into a catalog, it will just work. You can take a catalog and take a dump and take it out. Uh, tenant can only see the database objects and statistics that is just relevant for him. So you basically not, you can see that, for example, there are some global variables like number of things. So you can see something happening in the server, but you can't, you're basically contained without having to add any extra privileges. So it's much easier to set up if you have this normal setup where you have one database per tenant tenant, you have to see set privileges, he can only do this and this and this. Catalogs, everything just works. You don't need to set up anything. And you can give them root access uh, to the as a, a super user for the catalogs. He, he's, he still can't break it out from it. You can also do things that have, it has never been able, to, nobody has been able to do in the, actually any day, with any database before. You can set up a, a replication from an on-premise database inside the catalog. So you know suddenly SaaS providers can be a backup for something on-premise. You can be able to replicate from one catalog server to another server with catalogs, or even from a catalog to an on-premise MariaDB. This is to open new opportunities for SaaS providers to make money And uh, then we have the catalog root user. So we need to have some one user who can actually do all the things that normal user should not be able to do. For example, doing shutdown. So we have a the default catalog is uh, this, that actually is something that is already provided in the server and the client. It's kind of hidden, but they always existed. So I'm using that. The one who is super user of the dev catalog, he can run all, any commands and even switch catalog to be able to do statistics in it or the catalogs, just to be able to see what people are, people are using. So there's few commands that only he can do. And they're setting up replication. We can't allow just any tenant to set up replication That's not because that may be over and everything else. So that would be a different service that the SaaS provider can do. But it will be possible. So there are a few limitations. 
uh, if they if they insist, each catalog will have a general log and a slow query log. So you can see exactly what just happened in that catalog. There are some general errors from storage engine that could, for example, read error on a disk. That would be in a general, general in a log outside. And then there are some tables that will only be in the dev catalogs. Basically tables that uh, are users doesn't normally have a better access. Uh, like the application, the time, time zone tables, they don't change. Basically tables that are only needs to have one version. Or any other tables will be uh, inside the catalog. So it's each catalog will have their own MySQL schema with all the normal MySQL schema tables and so on. So the current state, we have a documentation of in the knowledge base with the overview. Then, then all open tasks are in, in the MDM with the added multi-tenancy catalogs to MariaDB. And we have about 20 open tasks that we're working on closely. Actually, the most hard ones, like for example, making InnoDB catalog aware, that is already done. I will come to that, that soon. So to start with catalogs, you basically run MariaDB inst install DB, like you would do when you insta 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 instantiate a new server, but you have a new option, minus catalogs, and then you just list the catalogs you want to do. You can also do that, uh, that basically will create the databases, the dev database, and all the catalogs. But you can use the same command to just add new catalogs afterwards to a running server. And uh, you, we only have one version, one binary. It's automatically work with catalogs or not. Internally, catalogs is uh, the big change is that we have just every place where we create a file name, we just had, have to add the catalog's name in front of it. So the, cha the change is, is all over the place, but they're still quite easy and easy to manage. So I think that this project will be reasonably stable from day one. So the catalog, specific catalogs commands uh, that exist is use catalog, which only the uh, root catalog user can do, but with the normal user can still do that. You can always switch to your own catalog because we use that in MySQL dump and everything else to have that work both for your installation and, and for be, making it easy to move between catalogs. Then create, drop, alter, show catalogs, show create catalog and so on. And uh, Basically, we do exactly like we do with databases, that we have an op file that, that gives you the default catalog assets and everything else. Each catalog, by the way, will have their own config file. So you will have one global config file for everything, and then you can change variables for each catalog in a separate config file. Uh, basically, from one catalog, I can say package in a list of all catalogs. Only, the, only, 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 uh, only if you are the, the super uh, root user. Ah. Basically, the SaaS provider. Okay. Cool. He, so we are, we are trying to contain it. So, so status commands. Normally, you have basically show global status and show and show status. So we added one show catalog status. So you can see what is happening in the current catalog. And, uh, and then we added show server status, which is basically for the whole server. Normal users basically just use global status and, and catalog status. Which, uh, and I couldn't have global status show everything because that's how you already use for showing the status of the full server. So basically this makes things totally compatible for what users are, are used to. So the, the question, so what is already done? I would say that we are about, uh, the, the hard things are done. The, 
but there's still some tasks left. So I think there's three, three, four months of development yet. But uh, and anybody can follow that uh, in Jira. But basically, uh, we have the most important clients done. Well, the status status variables work. So we have uh, the previous tables by catalog. But that's something we it's done. We just need to put it in. And we also extended the connector so that we, we have uh, an option that a new C programs can use to directly connect to a catalog. If you don't use, want to use the catalog dot data name. Database feature. So I have, have had the su support for video log events, backups, most important storage engines, connect. It's not the most important one, but it was, it has so many possibilities. So I wanted to see that how easy it was to do. It took me basically a couple of days to do. Quericas, uh, we actually can run the full uh, NTR test. Uh, with catalogs, but basically that's our test suite. So everything works with catalogs. And all they have about 300 tests that needs to be changed because uh, it didn't expect that there will be a directory before the, uh, the database directory. And there were lots of tests to went directly and expected files to be there when it wasn't. So I fixed everything, and this will be backported to earlier uh, versions of MariaDB, so we can backport catalog, cat catalogs if you so want them. Want. And uh, these are kind of the most important features that I've not yet done. So the system for, for catalogs, I think that's, and the Galera is the hardest one to do. But it doesn't mean that they are infinitely hard. It will just take some weeks. I haven't looked, have looked at Rob's DB. It may be easy, it may be not. And uh, so we will, the plan is to get everything that works now to work. I still want to have uh, uh, temperate tables managed, which will be a new thing because there's lots of SaaS providers that ask me, so how can we restrict or see how many, how much temperate tables or temple of files uh, a tenant is using. So I will add that to the first version. And the next step, we will look at what can we do with constraining memory, constraining disk space, maybe using C groups. So that's something that I need to talk with SAS providers to see exactly how we should do that. So that basically is, so I'm open for questions.